Hey uh, so as promised this is my second episode from the Underrated Companion series and this is about Zoe Harriet. So Zoe Harriet, she is from the year 2000, it's already been now, but in the 60s it hadn't been. She's from the year 2000 and she was an astrophysicist because she was on um, the moon base. Short disclaimer, I know her first episode was actually Wheel in Space. I have no idea why I kept saying it was the moon base, but I suppose they sound a bit similar, so please forgive me for that. That episode doesn't really exist in its entirety anymore. I think there are two episodes or one episode from the serial, and I've seen them, and it's about the Cybermen. She's on the space station, and she, um, she's got quite an important role as a scientist. For the 60s, having a female that is really intelligent, and actually Zoe was considered as intelligent, or if not more, mathematically intelligent than the Doctor. So that is really, really good for the 60s. Imagine like the little kids that would have been looking up to her. She was a really good idol as a companion in the 60s. It's no good, Zoe. I will not be beaten by this brainless tin box. But, but you can't do anything about it, can't I? A little problem in Algol, I think. In what? Algol. It's a sort of language you talk to computers in. As well as being really, really intelligent, she was really, really adorable. Like, uh, look at this face. I mean, she is... she's just so perfect. Everyone talks about how perfect the new v and, like, the new companions are. They're, they're, Zoe's the most perfect. Zoe wins number one most beautiful companion of all of them. She is just flawless. And she has the best wardrobe. I mean, like, she got to wear a purple cat suit and, and a feather boa and she's just... She's just so little. I think she's actually two inches tall, and with computer-generated graphics, they make her look big. And guess what? I get to go meet her in December, and I'm just gonna die on the floor. The Wendy Padbury doesn't actually age, I don't think. She's adorable. So, as I said, most of her episodes are missing. I've seen... I can't name them, as I did with Ace, because it's always my second favourite, not my first favourite. But, um, I've seen the moon base, I've seen... Any, any sort of, there's this box set, I think it's called Lost in Time. I've seen all of her episodes that are on that box set, so that's, I think there's this one called the S Pirates, or the Space Pirates. Oh, I don't know. I've seen the ones that she's on, on that box set, including the Moon Base, her first episode. There's Seeds of Death, I've seen that, that was an Ice Warrior one, that was really, really good. The Mind Robber I have, that's my favourite. One of my favourite classic who episodes ever. Mind Robber, I highly recommend you watch The Mind Robber, it's great. And I've got the Crotons on DVD. They're the, basically the generic, chunky, robot classic monsters. And in all of those episodes, she she lets on that she's scared. She's a, She screams a bit and stuff, but I believe that's sort of why they had female companions in the 60s. I think that's why Susan was there. She was the, the young girl to scream at everything and to like connect with the audience and the young members. So obviously Zoe is there to connect, but because she was with this other companion, Jamie, for once they made the male less in control, less like knowing what is going on, and Zoe, the female companion, knew more about what was going on than the male, so for the 60s that was sort of late 60s turned it around a bit and I thought that was really, really good. And everyone says that Classic Who in the 60s was really sexist. It wasn't. It wasn't at all. Like, you can go and search gift sets on Tumblr. There's heaps of heaps of um, examples that disprove that theory. A Goodbye was really sad. It was just, if you, if you haven't seen The War Games, Patrick Trouton's final episode, just stop watching now and go and watch it or something. But in the war games, her goodbye is much like Donna Noble's because and Jamie's because the second doctor gets forced to regenerate because he broken the laws given by the Time Lords. So his companions had to go back to where they came from. So Jamie came from the 1700s, I think. So he came from the year 2000. They thought they were going away and they thought they would remember their times with the Doctor, but they didn't. So they had the little goodbye wave and then, then they went away and they didn't know that they'll forget. So 
when she went back to the moon base, she remembered her first encounter with him on the moon base, but she didn't remember any of her adventures. Goodbye, Jerry. Goodbye, Doctor. Will we ever meet again? Again? Ah, oh, Zoe, you and I know time is relative, isn't it? Not entirely. They will be returned to a moment in time just before they went away from you. They will remember their first adventure with you, but nothing more. And the fact that, Do well, at least Don knew that she was going to forget everything, but Zoe didn't know what she was forgetting, so... I had so many feels in that episode. It was just full on. You should go watch that, Duke. Uh, as soon as this is over, go watch The Mind Robber and go watch The War Games, or at least the final episode of The War Games. Just, just go. Just, just go. So... Next time on this little series, I think I might make it the last episode because it'll be the 50th and it might be a bit pointless, but if you want me to talk about more companions that I like, I'll be happy. I'll gladly do it. But next time I'll talk about Adric. Um, he's he's amazing and I'm going to get my sibling to talk about Adric too because they are quite the, the Adric fans, so I'll see you then.